and you've written a report on this designated special status for Northern Ireland uh, post-Brexit. What could this look like? Um, we've been asked to examine a, a range of ways in which uh, designated special status within the EU for Northern Ireland could be delivered. Um, so the report looks at that from a legal perspective. Um, uh, much of this question uh, raises political issues uh, which we're not asked to examine. Uh, so we're looking at what's legally possible. Um, we think that there's a strong argument uh, for Northern Ireland to be formally recognised as a special case, um, given its unique position in all sorts of ways. Um, and we note that it now seems to be widely accepted uh, by the UK, by the EU, uh, that a special solution for Northern Ireland is required, um, whether or not that's called special status. Um, we think that any solution needs to address uh, the need for special arrangements in Northern Ireland uh, if the UK does leave the EU, um, and it also needs to safeguard the future possibility of the reunification of Ireland. Um, we think that special status for Northern Ireland is legally possible. Um, it's subject, of course, to political negotiations and decision-making. Um, we think there's a range of possible solutions, and our report uh, looks at some of those potential solutions uh, based on a long history of the EU being willing to agree uh, a range of tailored different, differentiated arrangements um, for states and parts of states uh, being both inside and outside the EU um, and, and some of those constituting what might be called special status. Um, so we look in particular at uh, what's uh, been agreed in Cyprus, uh, what's been agreed in respect of Greenland, and we also look at the, uh, the East German historical example which allowed for uh, reunification of a state and for the whole reunified state, uh, the expanded state, to be regarded as automatically a member state of the EU without having to formally accede um, to uh, the, uh, under the Lisbon Treaty, under Article 49 of the Lisbon Treaty. There seems to be an acknowledgement by David Davis and even Theresa May, that the, a special solution may be needed now. They've agreed to the six principles outlined by the European Commission, but it's still a bit vague. Do you have a better idea, of being based in London, of what their thinking is? Is, is there a plan that they're just not sharing with us? <laughs> Yes, we're very concerned uh, that uh, nearly 16 months after the referendum, uh, there seems to be no proper plan uh, for Northern Ireland and, and really no proper thinking or, or grappling um, with the very, very complex, difficult problems um, and the unique situation that Northern Ireland presents. Um, uh, we. Uh, we welcome the fact that there has been agreement on principles, but there needs to be uh, progress and agreement on detail. Uh, we think that workable and viable solutions are really urgently required now. Um, there has been agreement that flexible and imaginative solutions are needed, um, but we need to see the detail on that now. Um, and we also think that it's incumbent on the EU and incumbent on the Irish government um, to craft creative solutions themselves uh, rather than placing the ball wholly within the UK's court. Uh, we think the UK government in particular has a duty to provide greater clarity on its own proposals uh, and to engage constructively with alternative proposals rather than simply dismissing them. The Commission has turned round and said, more or less, you broke it, you fix it. Surely the onus is on the, the British government to find workable solutions that respect those principles that they support. Well, of course, uh, we would say that the onus is primarily on the UK government. Um, but uh, what we also say is that um, the EU and the Irish government, who also have a real vested interest in this issue, shouldn't, shouldn't just stand by at this point uh, when we're looking at a policy vacuum after um, 16 months after the referendum. After this council meeting, the Commission, the institutions, Europe, hope for progress and to reach beyond phase one by the end of December. That means there are two months to sort out these incredibly complicated problems. Do you think it's doable? I don't know if I can really answer that question because uh, we're purely looking at it from a legal perspective. I, I don't really have an insight into the, the political side and, and the negotiations. Um, but there certainly uh, 
extremely thorny issues and um, certainly the, the proposals or lack thereof to date don't inspire a great deal of confidence.